How do we attack in chess? How do we set up a position to where all the tactics work in our favor and we actually can attack in the first place? I'm going to show you guys that right now. So stay tuned. Let's play some chess. All right, so this is a recent game I played on chess.com. My opponent is uh, high 1900s, almost uh, 1,000. Oh, I'm sorry, almost 2,000. Hopefully my opponent's at least 1,000 here. So um, my opponent's playing the Sicilian Dragon, and uh, we know that my opponent's going to play the Sicilian Dragon, first of all, I should say, by uh, d6, most likely. Most likely they're going to play the Dragon because their bishop has two pawns in front of them. So the bishop's probably not going to go this way. It's probably going to go this way. So that's a tell that... Uh, our opponent's going to play g6 and play the dragon. Okay, so I play knight c3, and uh, we have the aforementioned dragon. So this is the dragon in the Sicilian dragon, the bishop on g7. It's a very strong piece both offensively and defensively. So uh, one of the strategies is to set up a battery and get rid of the bishop <clears throat> at, a, at, a, at the right point. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I set up my pieces, and now this is just the opening. So my opponent, uh, okay, attacks my bishop. All right, so this is the attack. This is the art of attack in chess, not the art of defense. But I'll show you guys some defense right here. Look at that. Bishop b3, beautiful defensive move. I'm sure none of you guys saw it. Don't lie. Okay, so I castle queenside, and this is very typical in uh, against the dragon. So it's very easy to play like this. We castle queenside, and we get a strong attack. We launch the h pawn. And we attack g6. So g6 is the focal point. In my opinion, uh, g6 is what we want to attack because we want to open up the h file. We want to force black to play h5. Black should play h5 after h4, but really strong players, even high 1900s, uh, 2000 level players, miss this idea. and They have to blockade with h5. And at that case, then we attack h5. But in this game, my opponent did not play h5 and he allowed me to play h5 at the right time okay so we have this move uh, a little aggressive here okay so obviously my opponent is going to trap my bishop and win a piece here if i'm not careful so i simply just blockade and now not only do i blockade but that gives me this square right here on uh, b5 for uh two of my knights so that's very good i'm controlling that square okay the my opponent comes at knight c6 so right here, uh, actually, believe it or not, I took the knight because of the age pawn. Now, the, we have to know <clears throat> what's our the, the main narrative of the chess game. Every chess game has a narrative. So what's the main narrative of this chess game? I want to open up the age file. If I open up the age file, I'm probably going to win the game because I have an open rook here. I can trade the bishops, get my queen in here, and start checkmating. I have to get rid of this knight and bishop, though. So... <clears throat> What does that have to do with the knight in c6? Well, I'll show you. I traded the knights. I plant the knight on d5. Uh, computer doesn't love this move, but the point is um, <clears throat> if the knight takes, which is what happens, uh, first of all, I got rid of the knight on f6. And not only that, I take with the pawn, not the bishop, so I win a tempo. This important tempo after the bishop moves allows me to play h5. It doesn't give my opponent time to play h5 himself and blockade. So now I am going to open up the position, the h file. Okay, uh, my opponent just played queen queen e8. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay, so queen d8 actually is setting up a battery against a4. Um, however, I had a way to combat this. So instead of just uh, you know paying attention to my opponent's threats, I still go on with my plan. I actually play, um, I take first, so I open up the h file, and then after my opponent takes back, I play bishop d4. Again, the computer says this is a, a slight inaccuracy, but um, it's actually the third best move at the same time. Third best engine move, so uh, go figure. So anyway, uh, the point is, um, if if the bishop takes here, then we just have bishop takes, and if the king takes, then we have queen h6, and I wouldn't want to be playing with the black pieces here because black is about to get checkmated. So the point is, after, um, in this position, after we have, uh, what did black play here? Bishop takes d4. Now I take back with the queen, and I'm defending the pawn twice now. That's the least of black's worries, I'm defending the pawn. That's just a bonus. I'm really actually coming in here for an attack. 
And in fact, we have to see mating patterns in chess. So if my rook was right here and jumped over that pawn magically, that would be checkmate. So what does that mean? What am I seeing? Well, if let's say my opponent made a random move here. So how would I get my rook to this square? I would just simply take the pawn. And if he takes back, we have check. And then we have check. And after king f7, rook h7, and then checkmate. So <clears throat> a little footwork there, but the whole point is you're ruining the king's structure and he has no defense after you sack the rook. Okay. My opponent saw this though. And uh, after I played uh, queen d4, my opponent played rook f7. So after rook f7, this would not work because I would just lose a rook and he would be defending everything. So, okay, I played rook h6 instead. And now my idea is going to be to get this rook here, sack this rook with check, and then this rook will magically appear here with check mate. So again, where does my attack come from? First, it comes from strategy believe it or not. So tactics first comes out of strategy. You have to know what the position is. You have to be able to read the position. You have to know what you want in the position. That's the first thing and what your opponent wants. And then you have to execute and go out and get it what you want. So IE in this position, the H file, once you get the open H file, now the tactics should work in your favor. Now you should start calculating and looking at forcing variations to see, to find the win. Okay, my opponent played rook c8. Uh, again, just uh, aiming at the king here. And I played rook h1. Now my threat is rook takes. If let's just say my opponent makes a random move, I have the rook takes and we have this nice checkmate. Okay, so <clears throat> my opponent didn't play that. My opponent played e5 instead. And e5 is really bad because it actually doesn't stop it. After I just simply take... Um, now my bishop's backing this up. So my opponent took back with the bishop here and figured he was okay because if I take, he's just going to take with the queen and he's parrying my attacks. The only problem is he didn't see that I still have rook takes g6. Again, I have the open files to the king, open diagonals to the king. Now everything is going to work in my favor as long as I take time to calculate Look at the forcing variations. I should have something. And in this position, I have rook takes g6. The point is, if black takes, he gets checkmated on the spot. And uh, if black doesn't take after rook g6 and plays uh, king f8, <coughs> I just take the bishop, attack the queen, and I'm threatening checkmate, and the game is over. And in fact, after I played rook g6, my opponent saw that and resigned. There you have it, folks. Hope that video was very helpful for you guys. If you thought it was, please make sure you hit that subscribe button or send me a like or a comment or a fax or snail mail or a letter or whatever. And then, I don't know, get out there, though. Go play some chess.